Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over X Defiant and sort of my first impressions and thoughts on it as a whole. And I've noted some more specific things I'm going to go through here. So the first major thing in X Defiant is the lack of skill-based matchmaking, which everybody's been excited about. Um, it's been one of their larger selling points in the whole thing. Um, and honestly, the matchmaking feels very good and it's very fun and reminiscent of the older Call of Duty games, in my opinion. I've found that sometimes you know, it, it's just, it's random, like the old COD, COD lobbies used to be. Sometimes the other team's very terrible, and you can just, you know, drop a 5KD, 6KD, 7KD game. Something crazy, you know. They just can't kill you, they're bots. Other times, it's a little bit of a mix. You know, there'll be one or two or three good players on the other team that are actually, like, really good. Maybe a little better than me, maybe as good as me, whatever. Um, and that makes it competitive and fun. And overall, the matchmaking is just... Obviously, there's no skill-based matchmaking, so it's just a good mix of fun, and it honestly makes for a good experience, just like the old days, and just like everybody wants it back in Call of Duty, because you never know what you're going to get when you load into a game. Sometimes it's a little harder competition, sometimes it's really easy, and it just it really keeps it fresh and enjoyable, unlike Call of Duty these days, where every game you have to sweat, and it's really hard, and everybody's just going crazy. Um, at least that's how my lobbies usually are, and I know a lot of people are the same way, so... I love the matchmaking, it's very fun. As far as the game's feel and, and FPS and overall just performance, I guess, the game feels very good overall. Some people complain about the movement and stuff, like feeling clunky or weird, but I think that's people that maybe aren't used to like the tap strafe sort of feature if you're familiar with that movement from Apex, because you can kind of do that a little bit in this game. It's not as crazy as Apex, but it's still a very good movement. Um, but overall, the game feels good. The FPS, even on ultra or high settings, you know, I get 200 plus FPS on my build. And I think most people are not going to have really any issues getting good FPS and running this game smoothly without stutters, which has been a problem in Call of Duty, especially if you don't have a super beefy build. Um, it's hard to get that those really high frame rates with no stuttering and all those sorts of things. So it's nice to have a game uh, that you can just, you know, turn on whatever settings you want and it's going to run well no matter what settings you have. And when it comes to the weapon variety and abilities and things like that, I do like the variety of weapons. I haven't used all of them, but I've used several different ones. I like the AK is really good. The ACR 6.8 is really solid. Um, the MP7 is really good. Really, all the guns kind of have their place. Some are definitely stronger and better than others, which is usually the case in about any game. But overall, just at launch, overall, the, the weapons seem pretty balanced in my opinion or maybe not balanced isn't the right word but they're all fun and usable i guess i would say um same thing with the abilities they're not all like crazy but they're all kind of like usable you know so you're not going to be like running into only one ability that's really annoying all the time and things like that i mean the shield at first was annoying uh, so there's a shield you put down. It's probably in the gameplay somewhere that I have on the screen. But there's a shield you can put down and you can shoot through it, but the enemy cannot shoot through it back at you. So it's kind of cheesy, but once you learn to play around it, it's really not that bad. And I think that's the case for all the abilities at this point. I'm sure there'll be new ones added and they'll make adjustments to them in the future as time goes on with this game. Um, but generally speaking, I think the abilities are decent and kind of fun. You can learn to play around them and play with them and use them to your advantage. Um, and then the weapon variety overall is pretty good, pretty fun. You can pretty much pick up any weapon you want and do decent with it. Again, it depends, you know, how the matchmaking is. If you're going against sweats with like really good weapon builds, you're probably going to struggle a little more um, if you don't have the best weapon you could. Uh, but with that said, let's move on to the next point. Now, leveling weapons, I don't really love. It takes a while to not only level them, but also unlock the attachments. Um, for instance, if you want to get like just certain attachments, I mean, they're, I don't even know what levels they are, but you get like one attachment at level 11 and then one at like 27 and one at 41 and one at, I don't even know what it goes up to, but, um, so getting certain attachments, especially the higher level ones does take a while because I've only been getting like one to two levels per game. Um, although I have read that uh, or heard on a Twitch stream somewhere that if you get 35 kills with a weapon, it levels it up one time. So I don't know if that's accurate or not, but overall the weapon leveling just takes a while. And I think unlocking the attachments would be a lot better if it was quicker, because then you could actually try out more weapons with different attachments faster. Because currently I've just been stuck using the AK-47 if I want to use something really good. The ACR, I started leveling a little bit, haven't really used the submachine guns as much as I'd like to. Um, and really I just haven't 
leveled up one gun other than the AK-47, and I've been playing uh, for about 10 hours over the course of like two days. So I feel like the weapon leveling could use some improvements. And the same thing kind of goes for the camos that they have right now, which is currently like bronze, silver, and gold. Uh, bronze is level 50, silver is level 75, and then gold is level 100, which I really want to get gold, but it's just going to take a while. It's probably going to take me a couple weeks. Um, depending on how much I play, just to get one gun, like the AK-47, to example, to level 100, because I think it's my highest leveled gun right now, and it's only like level 36 or something around there. Another unique aspect of this game, especially if you're going to compare it to Call of Duty, is the aim assist is definitely much, much weaker and less reliable, I would say, than games like Call of Duty, um, especially when people are doing that tap strafing thing where they're like really flying around the map. You got to actually track them like pretty well i mean there's definitely aim assist you feel it sometimes for sure but overall i think the lack of aim assist is actually kind of good although it does have a different feel than other games and you're gonna have to get used to it but overall i think it's a really good thing and it essentially creates more of a skill gap with the aiming a little bit because you actually have to be more precise um as well as the controls the the sensitivities the things like that feel a lot different and more unique on this game some people say it feels bad and I almost want to agree, but at the same time, I feel like it almost requires it to feel the way it does in order for there to be like more of a skill gap. Because if it's like Call of Duty in recent, more recent times, especially, I mean, honestly, the game, like if you've played a game with no aim assist or less aim assist before, and then you go to Call of Duty with the best aim assist settings, Call of Duty like carries your aim. It really does um, compared to these other games. So it's kind of nice to have some funkier feeling settings that you can kind of tweak and mess around with and then just practice and get used to because that's going to really create a skill gap uh with the aiming and be kind of rewarding whenever you are able to hit your shots really well because you know that you're actually aiming well now when it comes to the longevity of x defiant um and this is all my opinion but i'm thinking it's going to need more features and more content to keep it fresh right now it, you know, of course it just released it's really hot it's really fun to run around in the matchmaking is good like i said all the things i just went over it's really fun right now but i feel like it's gonna die out fairly quickly or get pretty repetitive pretty quickly even though they do have like maybe five different objective base modes um, but i think they're gonna need to add stuff features and things to make it engaging and unique moving forward in the long term if they want it to really stay around and stick for instance a search and destroy type game mode is planned in their future which is going to be really fun because i'm a search and destroy player at heart so really excited to see just how that turns out some of the maps are good I, it'll be really interesting to see how that turns out as a whole but they're also going to be having a ranked play system come out probably fairly soon i would imagine end of the launch i don't know if it'll be with this season one update uh, in a month or two whenever they're going to do it um, but they are having a rank play, so hopefully that's good. And things like that, that they can just add on that could really uh, kind of create a community within the game. I think that's what's going to help keep X Defiant around for a longer amount of time. Because I think with the game, you got so many different audiences. Like me, I'm a competitive player. I like to play competitive game modes more than pub stomping. So the pub, pub stomping stuff is going to burn out for me pretty quickly. And I'm going to want some search and destroy to play, some rank play. Um, and some different things like that, as well as different camos to grind, yada yada. But overall, I gotta say, X Defiant is very fun, and the matchmaking makes for a truly fun experience and reminiscent of the older Call of Duty games, where you never know what game you're gonna get into next. And that's gonna be about it for this video. If you've played X Defiant recently, let me know in the comments what you think about the game. I personally am enjoying it for now, but like I said, I think they're gonna need to add some stuff in the future to keep it fresh and keep people coming back. Uh, for more. But anyways, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.